In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. People of Sydney and beyond, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia. Christos Anesti. Alithos Anesti, Christus Resurrexit, Resurrexit Vere. Christ is risen, truly he is risen. Welcome to St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney for the Solemn Mass of Easter Sunday. It is great to welcome a basilica full of God's holy people. We're especially grateful to be able to gather in such numbers after we were closed for Easter 2020 and severely limited in the numbers for Easter 2021 due to COVID safety measures. We give thanks that things are much better now. Even as we continue to pray for an end to this pandemic, to an end to the war in Ukraine, for an end to the natural disasters here at home and for relief for all the victims. In preparation for the renewal of our baptismal promises and to receive the plenary indulgence granted by the Pope under the usual conditions to all who devoutly assist at this Mass, let us repent of our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, the holy apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints assist you with their merits and prayers. May the almighty and merciful Lord forgive you and free you from all your sins. May he help you persevere in fruitful penance, good example and sincere charity and lead you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Gloria in excelsis Deo.
us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with the speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. Oops. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had announced him, anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses. God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets hear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
the second reading is from a letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died. And now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Simon Peter and John came running to the tomb. In Eugene Bernon's impressionist painting of the incident, it's a glorious dawn and Peter is staring ahead, hand on heart, finger pointing forward, face confused like a rabbit in the headlights. John has his hands together in prayer. 
his hair flying in the wind, his face full of religious fervour. As the Gospel tells us, the young guy outpaces the older, but defers to him on entry. When heady and impulsive Peter enters the empty tomb, he emerges wondering what on earth has happened. When hearty and idealistic John goes in, he saw and believed, saw the emptiness and believed the resurrection. When people come to church, and I'm not sure how many of you actually ran to get here first today, they come with their own temperaments and motives. But on a day like Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, or Souls Day, or even Easter Day, they mostly do so not out of sentimentality or habit, as they might at Christmas, but rather because the feast and ritual speaks to some challenge in their own lives. We've had plenty of challenges lately. And there are striking parallels with the story of Jesus' last days. Rome was an imperial occupying power, occupying the Holy Land at that time. And its officials were willing to use military force and spill innocent blood to attain their objectives. The parallels with the Ukraine at the moment are very clear indeed. Jesus' disciples fled the violence and went into hiding for fear of their lives. And Jesus himself was imprisoned and isolated. And this resonates with the experience of the Ukrainian refugees, of flood evacuees, of those isolated by COVID, or those neglected in aged care facilities. There are echoes in our legal system and in other parts of our community of failures of justice as there were in Jesus' time. Jesus' agony in the garden and cries from the cross resemble the depression and anxiety of many today. And the weather events of eclipse and earthquake as Jesus died remind us of our seemingly endless series of natural disasters, bushfires, floods, mice and pandemic, that highlight nature's power and our vulnerability. In other words, the Holy Week story is our story. Is there light at the end of the tunnel or just another dark tunnel? 2,000 years ago, Mary Magdalene, Peter and John were wondering the same thing as they took it in turns to look into the tomb of Christ. Their hero, who they thought would liberate Israel and help every suffering soul, had been hailed one moment and damned the next. With his horrible execution, the movement had seemingly come to an end. His nearest had deserted, and his dearest were desolate. Come this Easter morning, they were numb with grief and disoriented. How do we respond to our own challenges? 
Our culture says suffering must be avoided at all costs. Fixed, quick, by negotiation, regulation, money, technology, therapy, drugs, whatever it takes. Where there's no fix, those who suffer are put out of sight, out of mind. And our state of New South Wales is poised on the verge of legalising the killing of some people judged better off dead. Easter proposes a different way of seeing things. We know that the way we undergo hard things can either ennoble us or demean us. We've seen in Judas and Peter how a moral lapse can end in self-destruction or in renewal. The metal of all the apostles and holy women was tested, in fact, and they came through by the end of Eastertide on fire with God's spirit. In Holy Week, the calibre of the civil and religious authorities of Jesus' day was likewise examined and in some cases found wanting. We saw on Holy Thursday night that Jesus is God with us. How he suffered all we do, not to trivialise suffering, but to accompany us through it. And so made us a church of fellow travellers who care and will administer the medicine of word and sacraments. We saw on Good Friday that Jesus is not just God with us, but God for us, given completely so we might live. He doesn't just sympathise with our fears and sufferings, but redeems them, bringing new possibilities and purpose. The post-flood reconstruction for those renewed by baptism. And we see on this Easter day that Jesus is not just God with us, and God for us, but God in us, transforming our fears and suffering by divine grace into love. Jesus himself demonstrated that fear and suffering can be transfigured as he was turned to pure light at Easter by the love with which he endured the darkness the day before. Indeed, to love is, among other things, to learn how to suffer well. Our word passion, which we use to describe the ardour of love, is the same word we use to describe the suffering of Christ and the martyrs. The passion of loving means learning to be with others, for others, in others, to see the tough times as opportunities to demonstrate faith in sympathetic accompaniment, to offer hope in renewing redemption, and to persevere in a love that transforms and glorifies. If you love until it hurts, Mother Teresa once said, there can be no more hurt, only more love. Or as the apostle of love, John, put it, perfect love casts out fear. 
Christ loved us when it hurt him very much. He died praying, God, I thirst for them. Father, forgive them. Mother, care for them. Friend, join me in paradise. Into your hands, all of you, I commend my spirit. Easter is God loving us to the end. Many misunderstood him. His followers can expect no better. Some misunderstand our views of fear and death, of faith and hope, of suffering and redemption, dismissing them as hopelessly idealistic or even sadomasochistic. Our goal, of course, is to relieve suffering in every morally and practically available way, which is why the church is the biggest palliative care provider in our country and the oldest and largest provider of health care in the world. Yet some would seek to exclude such experienced voices from the public square, especially from debates over euthanasia and the like. Some would even seek to conscript us to act against our Christian conscience. Lawmakers are talking about forcing Catholic hospitals, aged care facilities and health professionals to be complicit in euthanasia, in solving suffering by killing sufferers. If Holy Week teaches us anything, it is that when misunderstood and pressured like this, we must reconsecrate ourselves to the truth, stick to our principles, and explain ourselves honestly, patiently, humbly, compassionately. In the face of fright, Easter gives us new heart for fight rather than flight. But especially for the spiritual combat, the internal warfare of our character to cultivate, cultivate virtue in our souls. The dying Christ was ready for resurrection because of the way he suffered, with courage and love, not bitterness or recrimination. The light that was Christ was ready to be relit because of the way he had used it to lighten people's hearts with hope and enlighten hearts with faith and love. Death could not be a full stop for him, but only a colon, a break before the word was made resurrected flesh and the love sung of God was sung again. Christ is risen, truly he is risen. Alleluia.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life? everlasting. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
The risen Christ is now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us in glory. With Easter hope, we place our needs before him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that like St. Peter, he may continue to lead the church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for the things that are in heaven and be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those unjustly deprived of their freedom, that they may draw fresh hope of freedom from the mystery of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives and freedom are threatened by war, that Paschal season may bring peace and new hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and unable to be with us at this time, and those who treat them and care for them, that the blessings of Easter will give them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died, that they, might, that they may raise to eternal life, especially our deceased relatives, friends and parishioners, whom we remember especially today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we contemplate the excitement of the Blessed Virgin Mary on meeting her risen Son this morning, we join her in giving thanks to God as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead as he promised us. In peace and joy we present our prayers to you through the same risen Lord who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the for the praise and glory of his nation, for our good and for the Lord's holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry, Richard, and Danny, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, 
Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favour, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, before our final blessing, might I thank you for joining me for this solemn celebration of the Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord at St Mary's Cathedral. It has been a truly beautiful Mass and the climax of a holy week of extraordinary liturgies and devotions. For that, I want to thank our Cathedral Dean, Father Don Richardson and the Cathedral Clergy, the Precinct Manager, Helen Morissette, and Cathedral House staff, the sacristan, Mr. Chris Backhouse, our Master of Ceremonies, Father Louis Barakat, our deacons and seminarians and our team of cathedral staff, readers, ushers, bell ringers, acolytes and ministers. They've worked hard all week preparing this cathedral church, rehearsing and then assisting at this mass and many other ceremonies. I'm truly grateful. The news of Christ rising from the dead is hope for every troubled heart, and so must be shouted from the rooftops and sung as an Alleluia chorus. They talk of pulling out all stops, that means all stops on an organ. Today they pulled them out of three organs, plus an orchestra of brass instruments and timpani. A wonderful way to celebrate the greatest event in the history of humanity. For this, we thank the Director of Music, Mr. Thomas Wilson, the Assistant Director, Simon Nemensky, our musicians, Leigh Clarks and choristers. They have done splendidly yet again this year. Finally, on behalf of the Dean, clergy and staff of the Cathedral, and my own behalf, a very happy Easter to you and all your loved ones. May God bless you abundantly in this holiest of seasons. The Most Reverend Father Anthony, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Sydney, will give the apostolic blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Anthony, and for Holy Mother Church and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. Now down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Through the intercession of the blessed Apostles Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.